Having completed the Criminal Mastermind Challenge many, many times with various other people, as well as holding a couple of speedrun world records for the original apartment heist in GTA Online, I thought now would be a good time to give a comprehensive guide on how you can also complete it, and therefore getting at least a big fat $10 million bonus, which will substantially aid you in the pursuit of the tier 4 career progress for these heists, as you need 15 platinum trophies and to have earned $50 million. You can also earn another $1 million bonus if you complete all of these heists for the first time with the same team with the loyalty bonus, and another for the all in order bonus. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe for more of the best GTA guides on the internet. So what is the Criminal Mastermind Challenge? The award says only professionals need apply. This is the ultimate challenge. Complete all 5 heists in full on hard difficulty in order with the same team and without losing a single life. All five heists means the Fleeter job, the Prison Break, the Humane Labs Raid, Series A and the Pacific Standard job, which can all be triggered once you have met Lester and purchased any high-end apartment. So in this comprehensive guide, I'll be showing you the best and most efficient ways to get through this as easily as possible. So without further ado, let's get to it. First of all, the number one thing you need to have purchased is the Heavy Utility Vest, which you can find after you've completed the Humane Labs Raid. This is found in all clothing stores under Utility Vest. There is a black one or a grey one. These will give you around twice as much damage protection. No other Utility Vest will work in these heists, and the Heavy Utility Vests do not give more protection outside of these heists. Make sure you save this as one of your outfits. Those are so comfortable. Ideally, everyone wants to have played each heist at least once. As for the high-end apartments, I will go through the best ones to use for each mission, which will make everything faster, but this is not entirely necessary to complete the Criminal Mastermind. So let's take a look at the first heist, the Fleecer Job. The Fleecer Job is the only one where you will need just two people. So split your team of four into groups of two and both teams complete it before joining up for the next heist. The best apartment to use for the scope out is one at Del Perro. You cannot choose your outfit or vehicle here, but neither is necessary. You're in no real danger of dying as you will not be facing any enemies, so you can just complete this as normal. Take us to the Fleecer on Western Highway. Well, this bank's got some safety deposit boxes, and in one of those safety deposit boxes are some bonds. There it is. Take a look. You'll have one person being the driver and another being the hacker. The driver just heads to the bank, then delivers Lester back to his factory. <laughs> whoop de doo oh. Excuse me! Oh, where were we? Ah, masks. Paige. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll go over there, pick her up go back to your place to plan this thing. I can talk you through the planning board later. That might be helped by a visual aid. The rest is pretty self-explanatory. Listen to me, do what I say. Then take an SUV back to your apartment. Oh, shit! We're the hacker will have to complete a little mini game, which is a precursor to the finale. <laughs> no? Didn't like that one. The Karuma setup is the first one where you can choose your vehicle and outfit. Set it to player safe outfits so you can now wear your heavy utility vest. As for vehicles, you can take something like the Virtue and have the stolen Karuma do this. Or you can play it safe and take an armored Karuma and just shoot everyone until you're all clear. Uh, you can do whatever you like, as long as you get it done. You know, yeah, you don't want to get on this. Put on masks before saying hi. The person still in the Karuma just needs to avoid the following attackers and deliver to Lester's warehouse. If you think you can get away from the cops in a wrecked car, then go ahead. <laughs> Trash it, should Okay, I'll look 
after this. Lester will come by your place when you're ready to go. Lisa! Woo! <laughs> it's a two-man score, right? One of you drives, keeps the heat off of you. The other goes into the bank, goes to the Pacific Safety Deposit Box. Then you get out of there, you get in that fast armored car, and you get the hell out of that place. The best apartment for the finale is Alter Street. This is another where you won't be taking any damage, so heavy vests are not required. But if you want to feel extra safe, then wear it. Okay, here we go. I'm excited for you. I've got goosebumps up my arms and butterflies in my stomach and a light film of sweat on my upper lip. <laughs> you know where you left the car. At least I hope you do. You weren't drunk on painkillers, were you? No, that was me. <laughs> One player will be the getaway driver, while the other will be in charge of hacking and drilling. The hacking is a game of snake, with three different levels, each a little harder than the other. Time to open the vault, take out your phone and trigger the door. Once the hacking is complete, equip a mask and enter the bank. Have it already and get inside. Okay, now find the safety deposit box. The driver can reverse the Karuma right into the bank. Quick, be broadcasting live to the LSPD they will then shoot down these four cameras. I'm getting tired over here. To keep the witnesses under control, you can just hold an RPG, which will keep them quiet. Stay on the ground. Keep them under control while your partner's in the back. As for the driller, hold the drill button all the way down and ease the drill forward until it bites. Then very gently push forward until each portion of the lock is drilled out. Having the Karuma parked in the bank means you can both glitch inside it and drive off. Now just drive under the giant magnet and mission complete. By now, you should have all fully stocked up on snacks and armor. So, uh, Mr. Crest said we should talk about uh, work, but uh, not here. Every setup and finale is best to be started from the Integrity Way apartment. For the first prep, someone should use an armored Karuma, where everyone can get in and therefore have the ability to trip skip. This will not affect your criminal mastermind progress. Make sure the pilot is not the driver. Before you arrive at the plane, two players can jump out and get their vigilantes, while the pilot hops out and grabs the plane. The plane gets shot up and back to Alpha. Ah, oh, shit. Where are you gonna go? Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Holy shit! Nobody oh, else will be here. Oh, 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 oh. Shit! The safest way to play this is to clear everyone off the landing strip before leaving with the plane, but this will take twice as long. If you're confident enough, then you can leave with the plane as soon as possible, as the flight back is very long. The other three players can make sure all waves of enemies are dead, And then leave the airfield. Now clear the area and clear up any straight traffickers you encounter. For the prison bus, have two players in the armoured Karuma and take at least one vigilante. You see that? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy! Come on! Go to hell! Take me home! the psychotropic! The 
armored Karuma team can then easily take out the prison bus driver to then steal the bus and head over to this patch of land to avoid the cops. The vigilante team can take care of the chopper and any other cops nearby before escaping their wanted levels. For the station setup, you will have two teams. The safest method for the police team is to call up 911 and request the police. Hello, this is 911. What emergency service do you require? Thank you. Police officers are en route to your current location. They can then shoot the cops that arrive, steal their car, lose their wanted level in the subway, and walk straight into the police station to grab the schedule. You'll then have to destroy the police car and make your way back to the apartment. An alternative way is to have one of the Casco team wear a heavy utility vest, who can then blast everyone at the police station, clearing the way for the other police officer teammate to grab the schedule. There's the fucker! Ah! The second police officer teammate can then escort the Casco team member with a vigilante. The Casco team's safest option is to board the ship and kill everyone along the way before stealing the car. You can, however, climb this crane and parachute down to the car from here, but this is much more risky and should be avoided. The vigilante team then clear a path for the Casco team, who then just needs to deliver it to Sandy Shores. For wet work, again, there will be two teams. One team member from the mansion team heads to the yellow checkpoint and activates the cutscene. The other player waits on this hillside and snipes Popov as soon as he spawns in. If a guard sees you and sounds the alarm, Popov will completing their mission easily without any danger. The lawyer team takes an armored Karuma and waits on top of this building for the lawyers. Once they get out, kill them and head down into the Karuma. Well done. Now, go down and get their documents. If the police corner you, make sure you're killed, not captured. the passenger being right next to the briefcase so they can hop out and straight back in again, losing the cops before delivering it to the apartment.
got a bit of a problem. Some asshole got wind of what we we're up to. Apparently, killing a guy's closest associate puts a bit of a spotlight on him. <laughs> Simple. Should be the easiest money you'll ever make. For the finale, each player will have a very specific role. This is the only finale where you cannot choose to wear your heavy utility vest, so be wary of how much damage you can take. The demolition team steals the prison bus, then delivers it to Sandy Shores before blowing it up. And collecting the buzzard. They will now hover right outside the prison on top of this hill and make sure not to get too close or else they will be killed by homing launchers. Meanwhile, the prisoner and officer collect the bus. When they reach this fence, they both request their vigilantes and look in this direction. This will prevent the vigilantes spawning inside this part of the prison. Okay, get to it. As long as they think you're an inmate and a guard, they shouldn't raise the alarm. I said, shouldn't. Once they've hit the checkpoint and killed the guards, they both run outside to get their vigilantes. And then get inside the prison like this. The prisoner parks their vigilante right next to Rashkovsky and the prison officer parks his over by the steps. After they both wait for the demolition team to get into position, both players then trigger the checkpoint where police will then spawn in. So much for that, the facility is on alert. You move for Rishkovsky. The safest way here is to stay out of trouble and just wait for the demolition team to lock onto everyone and kill them that way to so avoid taking any real damage. Once the area is clear, the prison officer jumps into his vigilante and waits here. This means they will be inside their vehicle when the next cutscene ends. The prisoner triggers Rashkovsky cutscene. We got a problem. Air traffic's red flag the plane. Belly, <laughs> when the cutscene starts, the militia will be able to lock onto the noose who start to spawn in. We got a problem. Air traffic's red flag the plane and they're scrambling jets. Pilot, if they try to shoot you down, run a face maneuvers. Both prisoner and officer then help take out all the noose with their homing missiles. As for the pilot, they can just collect the plane and fly behind the jets that spawn in, making sure to stay away from the prison as they can be shot down with homing missiles and will bring the jet to the demolition team who can be killed by it. As soon as the prison team leaves, the pilot can land on this stretch of dirt track where minimal police will spawn at this time. When getting in the plane, remember that Reshkovsky will always get into the front right passenger side. Sometimes he will get a bit lost.
demolition team should now concentrate on only the police choppers to help the pilots start losing their wanted level. Do what you can do. We're almost there, people. The local PD are all over this. Communicate. Shoot somewhere with enough space to land and pull them out. If the pilot has still not lost the wanted level by the time they get to the checkpoint, just keep circling around it until you do. When parachuting down to the beach, to be safe, the demolition team should stay in the air to avoid any unnecessary accidents. Everyone then hops in and prison break completed. Hello people, I think you'll like this. It pays a lot, which is what you want. So there's this chemical laboratory called Humane Labs. The best department for all the setups is at Auto Street. The first setup for the Humane Labs raid is key codes. You'll have three main roles, with two players overlooking the other two at the meeting point. Use heavy weapons on the vehicles that attack. and then focus on the little alleyways. You need to clean up these agents. They're chasing a payoff and they will keep coming. Wearing your heavy utility vest will make this a breeze. If you haven't noticed by now, the vest slows you down, so the fastest way to move while wearing it is to jump. You could grab the drop briefcase just before the last wave of enemies arrive and then deliver it back to your apartment. For the insurgents, everyone should trip skip in an armoured Karuma. On the way, two players can jump out and get in their vigilantes. Might look into the financing options. Use it for the kids' soccer run. Not that I have children. That I know of. Officially. Who needs the paperwork, right? The Karuma team can then kill the Meriwether security and steal the insurgents. The vigilante team can then easily destroy the many enemies that will come their way as they escort the insurgents. To be on a safe side, keep your body armor available to protect you against any mishaps. Tell you we only needed one of these? The EMP mission can be done a number of ways, but the most straightforward and safest option is to take the awaiting dinghies to the aircraft carrier. Enemies
Japanese will be very aggressive here, but this should be easy when you're wearing a heavy utility vest. The person that steals the Hydra should just fly behind the many jets that spawn, making it much easier for the laser pilots to then take them out. It's safer to use homing missiles as the guns can cause damage to other players' jets if they cross paths and you have to get quite close to them, increasing the chances of accidents. When all clear, the Hydra pilot heads to Sandy Shores to complete the mission. Uh, people, go to work. For the Valkyrie, again, there are a few ways to complete this. The ultra safe method is to drive into the Meriwether base in an armored Karuma, then steal the chopper. Move on the chopper. You could then land on top of the base, far out of the way from any danger, and then all snipe the incoming buzzards from a distance. An alternative way is having a few teammates waiting at the buzzard spawn locations, who can then immediately take them out with explosive sniper rounds. They dispatch air units, point and pull the triggers. You cannot bring bogies back to us. Then when the helicopter team think it's safe enough, they can head over to the drop-off location. Looks like you're almost with them. Bring the chopper down easy. You don't want to mess this up now. That's it. Clear skies. Good work. My people are waiting to babysit the bird just north of the Alamo Sea. Drop it and you're done. When delivering the EMP, do not wear the heavy utility vest. You're not in any real danger of dying in this one, but you will need to be quick and agile, so just wear a normal outfit. Everyone can trip skip to the insurgent. When taking out the guards, it's possible to do this solo. Just keep at least one person behind to take the insurgent into the parking lot after the first two guards are killed. The more damage the EMP does, the longer the lights will be out. You're doing well, keep it up. Stay quiet, keep moving. Getting spotted and failing here, then restarting, will not affect your criminal mastermind challenge, so you can give this as many goes as necessary. The best way to do this is shoot one guard in the head, then quickly take out the one next to him. There are a total of 13, and with some practice, this is an extremely easy mission. Concentration is key, people. Take an amphetamine if you have one. Visualize. 
Neutralize your goal. Let's do this. Once you're all clear, the insurgent gets delivered after little hacking and then leave the area in the van. So we're good to go, I think. You've done great, and this won't be a problem. No one is gonna wanna admit that anything happened here. For the finale, there will be three main roles. Two players going into the humane labs, a pilot and their gunner. Everyone should still wear their heavy utility vests. The best apartment to use for the finale is North Conquer Avenue, but you can also trip skip, but this will invalidate any chances of getting the elite challenge. Let's look at the ground team first. Once they parachute down and into the labs, the assault shotgun is preferred in these tight corridors or also being in first person. A research station in the center of the facility. Move quickly, get through the lab and get us that data. Hold time! Looks like some systems are running on an emergency generator. As long as the main switch is off, that won't cause us problems. Once you've triggered the first cutscene inside, you'll eventually come to some water. While here, equip a scarf. This will then take off your heavy utility vest, meaning you can now swim much faster in the cooling tunnel. Do not forget to also equip your rebreather before diving in. Get the breathing apparatus on and get in the drink. Meanwhile, the pilot will drop off the gunner here on this mountain, well out the way from any attackers down below, and in the perfect position to start sniping the incoming buzzards. Chopper team, there's movement on the radar to the west of you. Be ready to engage. Merryweather's dispatch area and it's chopper team. Take them down. The pilot can then land the Valkyrie right here on the beach, ready for the pickup. When the ground team arrive, they should both get on the side guns and then land by the gunner on the mountain. While parked here, the buzzards will not send any missiles your way, ensuring little to no damage against you or the chopper. Once all the buzzards have been dealt with, it's an easy flight over to the last checkpoint. This way is unlikely to get you the elite challenge as well, but it's certainly the safest way, and after all, it's all about not dying. Uh, hi there! <laughs>
<laughs> welcome, welcome! I'm so glad you could make it. Now let's go! The first setup for Series A is the yacht. You have two teams for this one, a boat team and a helicopter team. The boat team collects their boat from Vespucci Beach and can start attacking the enemies. The task here is to collect nine packages of coke slashed around the yacht. As usual, the heavy utility vest will ensure your safety, and the assault shotgun will make short work of the attackers. The helicopter team can simply collect their chopper from Vespucci docks and land it on the yacht. They can then keep the cops at bay and wait for the boat team. Once all the coke has been collected, everyone flies off to the final drop-off, losing the cops along the way. The trash truck setup is one many people will be scared of, but there is a very easy way to get this done. There will be three locations where you need to pick up slash product while being attacked by multiple enemies. So if you know where these are, you can drop off a vigilante at each location before you start. For this run, we only stored two, one here close to Legion Square, and one over by the gas station near Leicester's factory. Another player then picked everyone up in their armoured Karuma. Get ready for a fight. After killing the guards, you can then steal the trash truck. To avoid any accidents, passengers should always wait for a signal from the driver to say when to get off. We use the truck's horn. The second and third locations can swap around on different playthroughs. When you hit the checkpoint, the passenger can then get out and hop in a vigilante, destroying any attackers with ease. Once the slashes have been collected, they can then follow the truck to the next location. They will need to get back into the truck to trigger the next checkpoints, but they can just jump out immediately and hop back into the vigilante. When you arrive at the gas station, blow the whole place up from a distance to prevent any accidental deaths. Grab the bags and look out for any more of them. You told them they 
From here, just head down by the Los Santos Customs and then through the Storm Drain, which is not only quicker, but you'll avoid a large number of attackers on the main roads. For the bikers, it's best to all trip skip to Sandy Shores. Despite this primarily being a stealth mission, it's best to wear your heavy utility vest for the second part of the mission. Once you've killed all the lost, two players can call in their vigilantes, while the other two find and drive the lost vans. There will be enemies attacking the entire way back to the drop-off, so the vigilantes can make short work of the many that spawn. For the weed setup, you'll have two main teams. The ground team will be the ones driving the trucks back, and the lookout team will be stealing a weaponized technical. You can trip skip to the tunnel near Mount Chiliad in an armored Karuma, but once here, you may want to decide to head back to the main road and have one of your lookout team grab their vigilante. Calling this in later on will have it spawn very far away from you, sometimes as far as the Lost Camp. Once enough enemies are killed for you all to safely collect your vehicles, with only one of the lookout team driving the technical, head through the forest and back through the tunnel. Avoid taking the train tracks as the train coming in the opposite direction is likely. With the vigilante in front, the rest of the mission is much like the last one where you'll face attacking enemies for the entire duration of the trip back to the drop off. Come on, get back here.
smell that grass like 10 minutes ago. The last prep is the O'Neill's farm. There should be a few semis at the farm. Some are faster than others. After trip skipping, have one player hop out and get their vigilante. This player can concentrate on the first batch of enemies at the front of the house. The others in the armored Karuma can go around the back of the house where there will be two trucks. It's important not to blow these up. After you've killed enough O'Neills, the truck can be stolen and hooked up to the tanker. When delivering the tanker, had the vigilante out in front to explode any attackers, and the Karuma behind to protect the tanker from anyone coming from the back. If the tanker takes too much damage, it will explode, the driver will die, and your criminal mastermind challenge will be reset. Take the shortcut off-road on your way to delivering it back at Chef's. Up. <laughs> oh, this is bad. This is. This is very, very, very bad. In the Series A finale, the best apartment to use is Integrity Way. You'll be split into two teams a North team and a South team. Both teams should take a vigilante each. Once both teams hit their checkpoints inside the building, you'll start getting wave of enemies attacking. Let's look at the North team first. It's best to have a sniper with explosive rounds to take out the vehicles that attack, while the other player focuses on the enemies on foot. After the first wave of enemies attack and is neutralized, the South team will get their first wave. The South team should drop a couple of proximities along here, and on the storm drain, as these will blow up the vehicles that attack before they get to you. You're a good crew. Shit. Ah. Lucky here, it's the boss. One player can shoot behind along here to help the North team. Once enough attackers are dead, you can then hop into a truck each while the other two players get into their vigilantes. Drop offs by El Gordo Lighthouse! Let's go! For the entire journey, the trucks will be attacked by enemies in choppers, SUVs, bikes, and vans. The vigilantes can use their homing missiles to kill the threats and also push the trucks to get them to the lighthouse faster. Before you turn off, ignore the GPS and head down across here on the grass. My plans are going up in smoke this time. <laughs> Assholes, we beat them. We beat the bricks. Drop offs up just ahead there.
love banks. Hmm? Especially the, the big ones that take big risks, because they just know that if they went under, we'd all be dead. Too big to fail? Hmm? Great idea. Let's put it to the test. Hmm? The ideal apartment for the first setup is Alter Street. From here, you turn left and then right, and you have the first van that the navigators can photograph. Okay, here we go. Transponders on one of four post up vans making runs around the city. Then just around the corner, you'll find the second van. Navigator photographer. That's good, a clear shot of the plate. Now, give me the rest of them. Now head towards Vespucci Beach, where you'll spot the third van. The other team heads up towards Eclipse Towers to find the one van up that way. Once all vans have been photographed, head back towards Legion Square and wait for Lester to tell you to take the van. Bingo, I found our guy. Let me pick you the location. It's best if only one player shoots the driver, so only that one will get the wanted level. It's not entirely necessary to wear the heavy utility vest for this one, but now is not the time to take any unnecessary risks. Great the lap that uh, trackified. Mm -hmm. If by great I mean barely functional, but we found the van, so... Deliver the van to Lester's factory, and if the driver still has a wanted level, they can hop out and swap with someone who doesn't. For the signal setup, it's best to start from Del Perro. From here, head to the Vespucci police station and check the roof for a helicopter. So, this guy's meeting you off the Western Highway just before Polito Bay. If you don't see one, drive around the block until one spawns. Alternatively, a chopper can spawn at downtown Vinewood, where you get the chopper for the Diamond Casino heist. You won't always get a wanted level here, as it depends on whether this copper blocks your path getting in or not. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh, uh, yeah. Schwartzman, he's reluctantly agreed to help us tune into the Pacific Standard Frequency. So give him the transponder, let him do his thing, then give it to Paige. Surrender now! Cover me now! Make your way up to the top of the building and everyone can ignore all of the checkpoints the game gives you and just head towards Zancudo military base, then land it on the small island. So, uh, Bobby's not gonna come out of his hut until all the cops are gone. A good place to land it is right next to this fallen tree. Landing too close to Avi's hut will despawn the chopper for later. Now kill everyone and rescue Avi. But, uh, I'm guessing the cops won't be there as we're done. Never should have stuck my head out. No, 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 it was cool. Don't answer the phone to Lester Crest. All right, all right. Let's go. From here, drive Avi to the beach across the water, while another player comes over with the chopper. You can get out of the boat at the island, but Avi sometimes gets stuck or lost, so this is the most practical way. You know, I said there was a small window? Well, that window is closing. If you don't get Avi to page soon, the transponder's gonna lock and all this will be for nothing. Lester crashed, you asshole! I know his secrets. I know where the bodies are buried.
the other two players can just sit this out on the island, destroying any choppers that may head their way. The pilot can trigger the escaping of the wanted level when they get close to the final drop off, where they can now just fly around until they've lost it. You gotta drop the heat before you meet Paige. Are you a cop? I'm not a cop. I'm helping Lester. Have you done it? What? Has he done it? For the hacker setup, there will be a team of decoys and the person collecting the van. The best apartment for this one is Integrity Way. The decoys can ignore what the game tells them to do and head straight over to this location opposite the Pacific Standard Bank, where they can take care of a load of enemies, either by using a Vigilante or the Armoured Karuma. Be careful with the Vigilante missiles, as you can blow up the black van and you'll have to restart the mission. The van driver can head straight to Lester's warehouse to collect the van and deliver it. You've got the van. I'll come back to you with details on what to do next. You see, I have split a larger task up into a series of smaller, easily achievable goals. <laughs> got that from a management book. After the cutscene, the decoys then drive off in the black van. Okay, now one of you is taking our van and bringing it to Paige. The rest of you are waiting in the alley, taking anyone who shows up on a wild goose chase in the other van. The traffic is absolutely horrendous in this mission, so it's best to get one of your better drivers to take charge. Now both teams just need to deliver their vans to the drop-offs. Convoy is the last mission where you face the biggest chance of dying, but here is the safest way to complete this. When you reach the first checkpoint, have a designated sniper who can sit on this patch of mountain and snipe the first savage with explosive rounds. This player can wait here for the duration of the mission. The rest of the players head off to meet the convoy in their vigilantes. When attacking, be careful not to shoot at or blow up the truck you need to steal, so it's best to take these out while on foot. Both vigilante drivers then escort the truck, with one at the front and one at the back. You got the truck? Okay, bring it to Paige. There will be lots of enemies and a few more savages. Avoid getting near the savages at all costs, as they can and will shoot missiles at you, killing you instantly. This is where the sniper comes in, who can take these out before they become a danger. If you're quick enough, you won't have to deal with the last savage as it will despawn. You got him? Yeah. 
for the bike setup, it's much safer if everyone uses the armoured Karuma. But I always attack from the back and collect the bike from here. The best route to take is by heading straight across and then right along the bridge, then left and first right. As long as you pay attention and don't get squashed by a van, you should all be absolutely fine. Stay out in front. You're now just one finale away from completing your criminal mastermind challenge. And if you're pooping your pants at the prospect of messing it up now, no need to worry, I've got you covered. Okay, okay, okay. So. The first part of the heist is straightforward, where you just do what the game tells you. The only difference here is killing a few hostages which triggers a short cutscene which then means you'll have noose to deal with outside. But there is a very good reason for this. Crowd control, get behind there and get your guns and the tellers. Now, there's a second gate that'll get you access to the lower level. Blow it! Holy crap! When collecting the money, it's best to just have one designated player to pick it up. Okay, now regroup back on the main floor. When you leave the bank, use explosives on the vehicles outside, keeping the money carrier out of the way, as every shot they take will cost you cash.
once the outside area is clear, they can head out, accompanied by a teammate. Head over on this fence to avoid a large majority of the police. Now, further down the hill, take a right. And then jump this wall, ensuring you all hit the yellow checkpoints. I've lost count of the amount of times randoms or even high level players haven't triggered this, meaning failing and starting again from the bank. Use more heavy weapons on the vehicles and get to the bikes. Make a play for the bikes, so they're up ahead where you stashed them behind that apartment building. We've left some party on. Once everyone is on a bike, send out two players to head around this corner where there will be a noose van waiting. This van will only be here if you trigger the noose inside the bank, which is why this needs to be done. They store up energy to accelerate when you break. They can then drive this back to pick up the money carrier, who must always sit in the back, which will greatly reduce their chances of being hit. Right about now, the CEO of Pack Standard is calling the mayor. He's probably patched in the chair of the Union Depository, and they're all about to tear the ass out of the chief of police. Now with everyone in the van, take the main roads all the way to the dinghy. So, uh, have any dye packs left in the box? Do you know because you'd be covering the feet? No, well, that means the transponder's worked. Thank you, Avi Schwartzman. You can have people help on a driver by standing on the roof, but this will be too risky. The only players that should be shooting are the driver and the passenger. Shooting from the back will open the doors and you'll end up losing more money. Once everyone is in the dinghy, it's a short boat ride under the bridge and you have completed the Criminal Mastermind Challenge. There's a lot of confused voices coming out of my police scanner right now. <laughs> you know what? I might have just pulled this off. Maybe I am a genius after all. I'd like to say a big thank you to these guys for helping me once again complete all of these heists and sending me their footage to make this video. So if you found this video useful, please drop it a like and subscribe for the best GTA guides on the internet. Here are some other videos you may also enjoy. I'm Beats Down and I'll see you in the next one.